what separates a good musician from a great musician is their ability to respond and recover immediately. You know, we all make mistakes, but if you let those mistakes really rattle you, then you've lost an entire piece of music. I've been a big fan of Lauren Pierce for years and I was so pumped to hear that she had this new intonation resource coming out. We're so excited to announce Please Play in Tune. What a great title and what a great resource. It has been changing the way I think about intonation and the accuracy of my intonation ever since digging in. So let's take a look at the book. It's available in our sheet music store, link in the description below. We're gonna chat with Lauren and learn all about this valuable topic and how you can take your intonation to the next level. We dig into resources like this and more every single week on our email newsletter. There's a link in the description below. Consider subscribing. The thing that I have learned in doing projects like this, especially educational ones, is when I have a visceral reaction like that of going like, no, I can't possibly do that. That means that I kind of have to do it. So please play in tune how to play double bass without annoying everyone around you. And Lauren's humor comes through in everything she does. Even though I teach intonation all the time, you know, I've never sat down and actually examined like, well, what would it look like to have a method and a process? Lauren always frames things really well. So she's got an introduction just digging into this book and this debate that she used to find when she was in school about intonation versus expressiveness. And of course, that's insane. There's not one without the other and you can't, no one wants to hear an expressive out of tune player, uh, nor an in tune, no expression player. So this is a really cool way to frame and get the book started. And this is a cool way to think about intonation, your ear, your technique, your response. I like that a lot. I think there's this sort of unspoken idea with intonation that you either have it or you don't, you know, I think, um, when I was learning how to teach, and especially when I was learning how to give master classes, I heard from so many teachers that I respect, like you just don't talk about intonation in a master class because, you know, it's a touchy subject. It can be embarrassing for the student and you don't want to put them on the spot when they're already, you know, sort of being really brave and in front of all their peers and, and playing. But most importantly, you know, you don't bring it up because what can you do in the moment? And master classes are, you know, the time for you to bring up stuff that you can fix like immediately and, and sort of show the process of fixing things. I think that's why I was sort of resistant to the topic of writing um, an intonation book um, because there is this idea and maybe I was holding this in myself as well that you either have it or you don't. But like with every project I do, I learn so much about the topic that I write about and it really is just a process, you know? Every single day is a process, lifelong journey of playing in tune, playing scales, learning pieces of repertoire, everything is a process. And so once I realized that, it was like, oh, this isn't just you have it or you don't. You know, you, this is something that you can work on. So glowing tones is a really cool exercise from the wonderful educator, Dennis Whitaker. He has this very cool series called Incredibly Useful Exercises and it's available in our sheet music store. And let's hear from Dennis on the topic of glowing tones. When I play a low G, See how the open G vibrates all by itself? That's a sympathetic vibration. It's kind of a magic trick. It's a string that automatically vibrates when you play another note of the same name. Any G played on a different string will make the open G vibrate. I kind of like lost my mind a little yeah. bit going like, how deep is this going to be? I was on the phone with Dennis Whitaker like every day for a while, just being like, what if I made it an autobiography? So just hearing that resonance, stopping the bow. I think with bass, sometimes we struggle to just hear the pitches on our instrument. You know, I certainly struggled with that, especially in the lower register. Um, you know, the lower the pitch, the more difficult it can be to hear, but it's not impossible. And so the first section is all about like literally tuning in to intonation and hearing what what even is the center of the pitch. Cool, filling in the half steps. So play the notes that are written on 
the page. When you get to the fermata, sing the resolution to G out loud while still singing though, play it on your instrument. Okay, so the first time through the whole notes you play and then you use the empty measure to sing the next note in the scale. So this is cool. She's getting you set up uh, just really for anticipating with your ear. It's a great intonation skill. I am borrowing a bass for this video. My bass is being used for another project, so my intonation could especially use some work today, but I'm being taken back to college in my ear training classes, and this is a great exercise. You can practice this without the instrument too. You can just sing against the drone, and yeah, super useful exercise. Okay, so set your drone to the tonic. So we got G major, we'll keep it on G. Set your metronome no faster than 60, we'll keep it on 60. <laughs> Noticing some uh, spicy uh, deviation from the pitch on my end. Intonation ultimately is a reactive technique, which is what the response section is all about. But the ear and technique, those are all about sort of like setting you up for success in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, that's sort of the preparatory um, aspect. So, technique is all about is your hand shaped in a way that can make it so that you hit, you know, the same spots every single time, you know, I want to get you to a place where you are like very, very close, not just like in the grand ballpark, you know, where you have to rely on your response um, in the moment. Sad Peggios, <laughs> the same thing, but minor, nice. So she's talking about direct sound versus spread sound. Direct is toward the bridge, slow and heavy. I include both left hand and right hand aspects of technique because right hand is also very much tied to intonation. You know, you've got two different types of sound, spread and direct. Spread sound is a little bit fuzzier and that can be hard to um, hear the intonation. And so guiding people through what it looks like and what it feels like in your body to play with a more direct sound. Then spread sound is away from the bridge, fast and light. is a uh, difference of a few cents just from my perception between those two. Mm. So in this one, you're going to make a crescendo and move toward the direct sound. So move closer to the bridge. Ooh, that's an interesting exercise. Response, which is the final sort of pillar in this method is, you know, what you do in the moment. And that one, I will say, was the trickiest to write about because I don't know what mistakes you're gonna make in the moment. I don't know what shifts are gonna be tough for you, but I know that there will be tendencies. Everybody has tendencies, you know? Um, when I shift, I almost always overshoot. If I undershoot, I'm like, amazing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know this about myself. Um, after spending years with myself in, in the practice room. And so the response section is really like, can you become familiar with your tendencies and anticipate them? where I believe most people are going to be going through it um, by themselves. Maybe they'll go through it with a teacher, but I wrote it for the person that is going through it themselves. You know, um, I don't know how many people have teachers and, and that might not be available to everyone. So I had that in mind. And so when I'm doing that, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the balance of how can I 
encourage people to take risks with me and not worry so much about, oh, I don't know how to play in thumb position or thumb position is really scary or I've never done it before. practicing at 40 I definitely want to rush in terms of the pacing just not just on the metronome but just in general you know I think um in writing like my scales book and then my etude book was like this too but particularly for this one and the scales book I found that as a teacher I am actually very focused on slowing things down and focusing on the big process you know so i think it goes back to this idea of well is intonation like this all or nothing thing you either have it or you don't if it's not then what does it look like to live a life where you're aiming for better intonation <laughs> tried really hard to express in the book that you know it's it's a it's a cycle that you have to go through over and over and over again and just because you continue to notice your sh your shoulder is raised and it keeps coming back up and it keeps coming back up and you have to keep lowering it down that doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong it just means like you got a lot of memory that you have to sort of rewire. That's a look at the first half, not even the first half. It's an incredible resource, so much material from Lauren. You can check out the complete book in our Sheet Music Store and check out what we've got linked up here for more learning.